Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Everyone. So today we're going to start with the aggregate functions with that we have within DAX. Okay. And uh, there are many aggregate functions that are available. And I'll place a link in the description where you can access the full list of those functions. But today we're going to cover the most important ones that you will ever need while working with aggregate functions. Okay. Now starting with the most basic ones that we already know and use in multiple scenarios are sum, count, average and count a. Okay. So we're going to just quickly see how that works because I just wanted to cover the basics. Uh, although you might already know these functions. So feel free to skip ahead in case you already know them. But just for the beginners, I'm going to just cover them quickly. Okay. So when you talk about sum, and I'm going to create a measure to uh, showcase all the aggregate functions here, I'm using the same data set that we used last time the PISA data set, right? So what I'll do is I'll just insert a new measure. And within this measure, I'm going to first write the sum function. Okay, so sum simply means that in case you want to sum an entire column, uh, you know, you can just apply a sum function and you know, let's say I want to sum the entire sales. So you just enter it like this and that is it. It will give you a sum of the entire sales column. And I'm going to drag this into a card so that you know what's happening. Okay. Now remember there are other options to, you know, apply filters within this measure, but we will not be covering those in this video because we know we just want to cover the basics first and then get into those mashup functions where we club together multiple functions together to create uh, amazing results right so we're going to get to that in future videos but for now let's try to focus on the basics now you understood how sum works uh, similarly this is how count works so you can just write count uh, let's say you want to count the number of pizzas pizza names that you have in your data so it will just give you a count okay uh, basically it's counting the rows that are there the third function is average. So let's say you want the average sales that were there for the for all the rows that we have. So you can just apply average. So it will give you the average results. And then we have uh, count A where we can just count number of values in a column which are not blank. Okay, so I can use any column here. Pizza code, let's say for example, and it will give me a count. All right. Now let's jump into the exciting stuff. All right. Uh, there are a set of functions within DAX, uh, especially within aggregate functions, which has an X at the end of it. Now here is a list sum X, count X, count AX, average X, mean X, max X and product X. Okay. Now, do you understand what that X stands for? Basically X stands for expression. And what these set of functions does is, it calculates a certain expression at row level and then apply the final function at the end. So let me give you an example. So let's say in this data, you want to first multiply your sales and price USD together. And then the output of that multiplication should be summed up for each and every row. So whatever output that you receive, uh, all those outputs should be summed up at the end. Now there are two ways to do it. First one is to create a calculated column and in that calculated column, you need to you know, apply this multiplication and at the end you can apply a sum function, right? In a, in a measure, but that, that's a longer approach. A better way to do it is to apply some X. Let me just quickly apply that function and show you how it's done. So let's say I'm going to write some X. Okay. And I want to what I want to do is first of all, refer a table uh, in this case, it's pizza sales and the expression that I want to give. So expression is simply a formula or some kind of logic that we want to implement within this sum X function. Okay. So let's say I want to use price USD column and I want to multiply that with sales. Okay. And then close the bracket. It has given me 14 K. So let's see if the result that we got is correct or not. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column here in a new column. I'm going to multiply 
the price USD column with sales column. Okay. So I've got this result column, right? Now what I, I will do is in a new measure, let me create a new measure here. I'm going to sum my column. Okay. The new column that we created and I'm going to drag this again into a card. And if you see the results are the same, right? But while applying this method, we did an extra step of creating a new column, which obviously increased your file size. And then you applied another sum function to get this result. But in some X, we simply applied some X and got that result. Now, let me give you another example. Okay. And instead of some X, let's apply average X. So again, the table name is pizza sales. And I want to subtract sales figure with unsold figures and then get an average of that entire thing. What this function is doing is first of all, it's subtracting unsold value from the sales. And then with that result for each row item, it is calculating an average. Okay. So I'm going to create one more column here and within this column, I'm going to say sales minus unsold. Okay. And this column two, I'm going to write another measure here using this measure. I'm going to say average column two. As you see, the results are the same, but the first approach is much better, right? So I hope you understood the expression aggregation functions. Uh, there are a list of functions that you can use, including minimum, maximum, product, average, count, etc. So you can just go through them, try it out on your own. The concept remains the same. It will calculate whatever expression you provide for each row item and then apply the final function that you gave it. I mean, whether it's an average count, sum or whatever it is. Okay. All right. Perfect. Now coming to the final part of this video, which is distinct values. Okay. Now it has three main functions to it. Two of them would be covered in a measure and the final one we will cover it in a table. Okay. So we'll see how it's done. So first one is distinct count. Okay. So let's say you want the distinct count of pizza names here. Okay. So what you can do is, just write distinct count and choose pizza name column and it will give you a count of six. But I know for a fact that total pizzas that I have, the type of pizzas that I have are five. It is giving me six because there is a blank row in this data set and it's counting blank as well. Okay. So in order to avoid that, you use another function, which is called distinct count, no blank. Okay. So distinct count, no blank again, pizza name. And this time the results would be five. Cool. All right. Perfect. And the final function in this is distinct. So what distinct does is it returns a table with one column with the distinct value of whatever column you require. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go to modeling tab and click on this new table. And within this new table, I'm going to write distinct and I'm going to use pizza name column. Okay. So what this DAX does is it creates a table for you. You remember a couple of videos back, we saw two DAXs within the date time function, which can create a table. This is a function within aggregate family, which can create a table. If I go to the data view, this is a new table that we created. And if you see, it has given me the table with distinct values in it. Now there is a blank value here because as per power BI blank is also a separate value. So that's why it's considering that as a distinct value, you can apply additional filters onto this table in case you want to remove that blank value. Okay. So that is it for today. I hope this was helpful. Next we will be covering logical functions within DAX and 
it's going to get interesting in following videos because we're going to create mashup functions together and see some interesting relationship building DAXs that are there within Power BI. Okay, so stay tuned for that. And if you're liking my content, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.